2024 Orange Blossom Classic will showcase the Alabama State Hornets and North Carolina Central Eagles at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami Gardens. And that game will be played Sunday, September 1st. Statement from the executive director of the OBC, Kendra Bullock. Orange Blossom Classic has always been a beacon of opportunity and unity in the HBC community. Uh, and this year, we present the talents of North Carolina Central Eagles and the Alabama State University Hornets offering an exciting experience. We welcome both teams with open arms, and we are excited about the unique energy and competition they will bring to the class. Let's see if we got Dr. Cavill back in there with the audio. Hey, Charles. How's it there going? Go. How you doing, Doc? We got you back in there. Man, I got all excited about the sweater you got on. I was going to tell everybody, let everybody see the back of it, but uh, I couldn't hear you. Yeah, I know. I know. I got I to gotta turn around to the camera. It's got all the swag teams on the back. So uh, definitely uh, one of, one of the, the, the dope sweaters in, in the closet there. So, <laughs> Man, I wonder how you got a hold of that one. Yeah, I, I got somebody to thank for getting a hold of this one. Let me see if I can flip my back to them. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, that's it. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, got all twelve schools on. There. Got all twelve schools on the back. All twelve schools on the back. Well, Charles, I've been deaning today, so the deaning got me a little bit. Uh, understood. You know. Understood. But uh, I see that you're getting in here, and we're getting it going. What kind of news you got going on with yourself? Yeah, no doubt. Uh, we talked about. Uh, we we were, we'll get into it. Of course, the schedules that came out today. Uh, with regards to the SWAT team, though, being action in 2024 uh, is generating a lot of buzz in terms of uh, when if we're going to see some of those matchups. We touched on the teams that will be playing in the Orange Blossom Classic this year. It will be Alabama State, Eddie Robinson and his Hornets taking on Trey Oliver and the North Carolina Central Eagles. So those are let me ask you. Let me ask things. you that question since Jackson State and FAMU have been in that Classic over the last three years. Yeah, uh, what are your up. thoughts with that going on? Before we get into this little media, I want to get your thoughts on that. Uh, uh, what are your thoughts on that move? Well, I, I think there was a little bit of uh, fatigue with regards to Jackson State fans making the travel down to Miami uh, for the past three years. So, I, I, and I think you get a, you know, you generate a, a, some interest uh, with some other schools playing down in the Orange Blossom Classic. But I, I think that brings us to the other piece of news. Of course, when we get to the schedules. Now that we see Florida a and will be making a trek to Jackson, Mississippi this year to take on uh, Jackson State. And that has become one of the more heated rivalries in the SWAC. So this year, you know, I think Jackson State fans are taking a, a sigh of relief, a, a breath of not having to uh, spend that money to go all the way down there to Miami. Everybody was asking, where were y'all at this past year? You know that been to Atlanta the week before, and then you got to go down to Miami after that. You know, that, that expendable income only goes so far. So, <laughs> Especially when you've done it a couple of times, you know, there's but so much you can get excited about that trip uh, exactly. when you've done it two years in a row. Um, so that's part of it, too, uh, that, that you just get off a big, momentous trip, and a lot of people going to Atlanta. Obviously, it's different. It is Atlanta. It's a good drive. You can get in there easy to fly into. And you got the, you know, debut of the new coach. And so a lot of people want to be in for that. And so, yeah, it just scheduling, those are some things you want to think about it. Let's take our first break. But before you do that, I know you have a video that you wanted to show uh, in regards to the new coach, uh, Texas Southern University, his media day. Did you get a bit of that information? Yeah, I did get, uh, we, we were at uh, Coach uh, Chris Dishman's uh, introductory press conference today, and uh, Roy, if you roll some of that B-roll there, you can take the audio out. Uh, but yeah, we uh, had an opportunity to uh, catch some of that uh, in terms of the rollout of Chris Dishman, who's now the head coach at Texas Southern. So uh, a lot of media dignitaries there earlier today. Uh, a lot of questions were asked of Coach Dishman. And uh, a uh, bit of breaking news. We're going to have him on this Thursday where he will lay out his video on uh, the Texas Southern program. So uh, looking forward to uh, what the Dishman era brings with regards to Texas Southern football. Couple of couple of things that I hadn't quite always seen. Obviously, you have the VP of Intercollegiate Athletics, Dr. <laughs> Kevin Granger. But as you see from the video, you have two of the regions. Yeah, he was playing by two of the regions. Uh, and yeah. the chair there in regards to welcoming him. That's a little different. The other thing that I noticed was a little different is not very often when you bring in a new coach that you have the coach of the rival institution 
Prairie View A&M University, Coach Bubba McDowell was there. And certainly you can understand in this case with them being teammates uh, and things of that nature, but that was a little different. So uh, getting off uh, to a hot start, Texas Southern University in terms of the, the official press conference today, it'll be fascinating to see. It sounds like there's some news out there potentially for Morehouse. Obviously you had the news with FAMU in terms of potential finalists. So it looks like finally things are culminating. We're going to get some announcements of these head coaches so it'll be fascinating to see what that looks like uh, as we get into it. But let's get back to a little basketball. Uh, we'll come back on the other side. We'll do the top five for the major division of the women uh, as we get into it. And then we'll save that last 15-minute segment. I want to go into it, and you kind of tease one out uh, with fam. You going to Jackson in terms of the big games. But I want to get more into your excitement. With the fan excitement, what are some of the big games that they're looking forward to? So as we do the poll rankings and throughout the show, I want folks to go ahead and send up their tap matchups. What are they most looking forward to uh, in terms of the release of the SWAT games? Obviously, they just flip uh, essentially from last year. It may be some new non-conference games to get you exciting. Maybe some SWAT non-conference conference matchups, as I like to call them. But with all that being said, I'd like to see for those – viewing the show, what are their thoughts on some of the games they're looking forward to this year and why? But that, that being said, let's take our first break, come back on the other side, and get into the major division of the poll rankings. Itchy, squirmy, scratchy, family not getting clean. Get Charmin Ultra Strong. Go get them. It just cleans better. With a diamond weave texture, your family can use less while still getting clean. Goodbye, itchy squirm. Hello, clean bottom. <laughs> <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? At Hampton Law, our primary goal is to provide non-traditional yet effective solutions and redefine the approach to client legal concerns. As your trusted legal advisor, we believe in sophisticated, personalized services that eliminate the confusion and complexity sometimes associated with legal matters. Our high standard for client care and concern, coupled with our extensive legal knowledge and skills, make Hampton Law a resource focused on the protection of the client's interest and overall goals. We value our clients and truly enjoy working with them. Visit THamptonLaw.com to conveniently schedule an appointment online. Tamika Hampton Esquire. 1631 Rock Springs Road, Suite 336, Apopka, Florida, 407-494-1471. THamptonLaw.com Nope. Nope. You want him? Ooh, I like him. The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge, featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. When we're back, it's time for the 2024 Urban Nerd Con. Join us in Atlanta, Georgia, April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel. Special guests include Underworld creator Kevin Grievous. Gary Gray from Fairly Odd Parents, from Nickelodeon, Giovanni Samuels, the Science Machine, Michael Green, the Sci Fi Sisters, and from Spaceballs and Star Trek Voyager, Tim Russ. Hi, I'm Tim Russ. Join me April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia, for the Urban Nerd Con. Our heroes, our villains, our stories. Everyone con. I'll see you there. Live long and prosper. Visit theurbannerdcon.net to get your buy one, get one free badges before the price increases. Remember, 
our heroes, our villains, our stories. Everyone's con. See you there. You can press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot of And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir and pay attention because he gonna teach a lesson. This is Dr. Bill with Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Charles, did you give the introduction? Officially I did. First, so for I did. I, four, I, seven, I, I, I said four hey, seven. I might say so four eight. good at the game now, man. I guess you getting <laughs> you getting ready for uh the episode five hundred for real five hundred one, aren't you? We might be pulling ourselves on on, on into the stable for our episode five hundred one. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. Let's get into the major division poll rankings, top five for the women's division. Uh, not a lot of changes in terms of the women's, but let's get into it. Nobody dropped out of the poll, as I said, in terms of the top five. Not a lot of changes. Some new teams maybe at the top. We'll see what that looks like or rearranging the polls. Those getting votes are still outside of some of the teams that are up and down, Southern Jaguars. Five and eleven, three and two in conference play. Probably the surprise everybody is UAP, the P, UAPB, the Golden Lions for the women's are eight and ten, three and two. They had their second step back, very close game, cool back, uh, closed back into it, but uh, couldn't quite get over the hump. Looked like they had bounced back and got a big win on Saturday, and then as you like to say, those Mondays, mm. those Mondays, and boy did they take a fall and victim to it. Coppin State Eagles, they're at the top of the MEAC. Uh, they hadn't played Norfolk State yet, but Norfolk State took a loss. We'll talk a little bit about that more. Uh, they couldn't jump in the top five, but they certainly in the hot hunt as they are hot 3-0 and in the MEAC, the top to turn MEAC, and just as wild on the men's side, but uh, we'll get to that in the next segment. Alabama a and Bulldogs, 8-9, 3-2, uh, another team that's kind of playing up and down, so they give you some indication of those teams on the outside. With that being said, let's go to number five, the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. They had bounced back this weekend, big two victories over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Then improved their record to 12-6 and six overall, 3-2 and two in the conference race, looking good with 49 points. Bringing us to number four, Grambling State Tigers, 10-6, 4-1, 57 points uh, at the fourth spot. They had a pretty good weekend. As they got the big win over Southern, and they took them uh, to the woodshed in terms of how they got it done in that matchup. So that was fascinating. At number three, Spartans, Norfolk State Spartans. I told you they took a loss. It was in conference play, 13-5, and 2-1. and one. They fall from the number one spot. So we will have a new number one this weekend with 61 points as they keep it going. At number four, I mean, at number two, North Carolina a t Aggies, they're rolling in conference play. Second year in a row where they started off really hot in the CAA. They're at 10 and 6, 4 and 1, 73 points, but they stay at number two. But number one team, they dropped, jumped from the three spot all the way to number one is Jack State Tigers. 10 and 6, 5 and 0. Oh, they're rolling in conference play. Big wins, uh, undefeated in conference play. All eight first place votes, 80 points. Bringing up number three. It'll be interesting to see how long they can stay up there with the Spartans chasing them. That was previous number one. And more importantly, the Aggies at number two are looking really good uh, in terms of what that looks like. So I'm fascinating to see uh, what your thoughts are. Before we got in the top five, let me know your thoughts on Coppin State, if you would, in regards to them being 3-0 and in the MEAC on the women's side. Well, I think they've been an early surprise uh, when you take a look at what they're doing uh, over there in the MEAC. Uh, like you said, they started out 3-0, big win over Morgan State this past Monday. Uh, but uh, a couple of young ladies uh, that I want to make mention of, Faith Blackstone had a huge game against Morgan State. And then Layla Lawrence, uh, she's been a double-double machine for Coppin State. So uh, they've been an early surprise going 3-0 thus far. With that being said, look at those top five for me. What are your thoughts on the top five? Uh, before you jump out there with the number one, because I want to get your thoughts on that specifically. <laughs> but before you do that, what do you think about Norfolk State? Their tough uh, upset loss on the road to Howard, which surprised a lot of people. Not just that they lost on the road to Howard uh, that won uh, a couple of years ago, but the fact how they lost 
Right. And then how it wasn't necessarily playing very well coming into conference play. Right. What are your thoughts in terms of that? It was really a dominant victory by Howard. And I think that's what uh, caught me by surprise. Uh, the fact that they built up a 14 point lead uh, at one point, 34 20 in their game. And they never really took their foot off the gas. And that was kind of surprising that Norfolk state never could really uh, get themselves back in the game. So uh, that was one that kind of caught me by surprise. Uh, the other one, big one that caught me by surprise, come back over to the sweat. Uh, was Bethune Cookman and, and what they've done thus far? They've jumped themselves up into the top five, but a huge road win uh, over uh, Don Thornton's uh, UAPB Golden Lions. And and when we take a look at UAPB, uh, that's the second time they've stubbed their toe. Uh, this year, lost at, on the road to Texas Southern. Now they've lost one at home. Uh, starting to wonder about some of the chemistry things that are going on up there because uh, with regards to that team, that is one of the better teams that I thought in the sweat. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, Jackson State Tigers, they find their way back in the number one spot. They're playing well, and they are dominating teams. They look like they're on a mission. Yeah, they didn't win the tournament championship, but they look like they've taken that personal. Uh, what are your thoughts in terms of the women at Jackson State, how they're playing, and the fact now they jumped to the number one spot? Do you think they will hold on to it is also the question I want to ask. Well, it's going to be very interesting because I think this weekend, Jackson State going on the road uh, to play uh, an upstart Bethune-Cookman team, uh, that's going to be an early test, I think, for the Lady Tigers in terms of uh, of, uh, of that atmosphere, especially more gymnasium. I know the Aggies fans are, are going to wonder how is Jackson State going to jump them in the poll this week, but Jackson State, they've been playing some lights-out basketball, and they're getting it both done uh, in some categories that are really – paying attention to uh, rebounding, second chance points. Uh, that's been huge for Jackson State. And then they're, they're hitting some outside shots. Adriana Avan has been a, a, a great uh, addition to this Jackson State basketball team in terms of uh, her ability to knock down shots from the outside and also get in the lane and, and create some habit and create some easy buckets from, for, some, for some other players. So Jackson State, like you said, it looks like they've been playing with a huge chip on their shoulder. And <laughs> to make a read on a chip on the shoulder, that's a dangerous thing. Yeah, yeah. With that being said, staying in the uh, SWAC, you have UAPB on the road to Southern. Um, that is the Saturday. And then on Monday, they go to Gramlin, who were truly playing well. So Pine Bluff has the chance to kind of show that, yeah, we stubbed our toe, but we're still really in the mix. Or it can get quite ugly in terms of them adding three, maybe four losses this week. I think Southern will be an interesting one, particularly after the big loss on the road. You know, they're going to want to uh, get their minds right and get it straight. They have an extra couple of extra days of practice. They didn't have that Monday contest. So that's fascinating to me. And Grambling obviously is playing really well. Playing it's really well. On that troubled Monday, particularly on the road. So that's uh, one that kind of keeps my eyes. What are your thoughts on those two games? Yeah, big weekend uh, this past weekend uh, for Grambling. I think uh, that I think the score at one point was 40 to 15. It really a score that really just threw me off. Like I, I, I thought I read it wrong. I had to put my glasses on. But big weekend for Grambling. And then, uh, like you said, a huge weekend this upcoming weekend in terms of uh, taking on UAPB. That's going to be an interesting battle to me with regards to uh, can this UAPB team get it together because they do have all the pieces. And you're talking about Zay Green, I think one of the premier – players not just in this conference but in the country somebody who i truly believe will be a WNBA pick uh, i think she already has two triple doubles already thus far on the season three if i'm not mistaken let's go into the MEAC. uh we got some key matchups howard told you they had a huge upset there at morgan state uh in terms of the saturday matchup and then you have cop and state at norfolk state I told you, Cotton State, while they're outside of the top five, they are 3-0 and in conference play. You have Norfolk State that stubbed the toe. Um, again, these are teams that play Saturday, a couple of days of play. You do have a non-conference matchup with Maryland, Eastern Shore, Townsend early on, but I really wanted to look at these conference games. <clears throat> what are your thoughts of Howard and Morgan State and then Cobbin State and Norfolk State? Cobbin State and Norfolk State, that's the one that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, but we'll see if Kiara Wheeler and Diamond Johnson can – uh, get back off the schneid. That was a surprising performance against Howard. And, but like you said, Coppin State, they're the upstart. 3-0 thus far, and they're playing some great basketball. But uh, taking on this Norfolk State that now has a loss on the ledger, we'll see if they can come back out with a little more fighting vigor this upcoming weekend. 
not only that, we get to see real quick how real Coppin State is. Guess who they got on Monday? They at home, but they got Howard. They, they got, got Howard. Howard. Yeah. How about beat the whole state that yeah. you're saying. So you talking about having two big matchups. So Coppin State uh, can make a major statement this uh, weekend, if you would, in regards to what they look into me at. With that being said, uh, let me look a little bit. One last one wouldn't be right if we didn't get in here and look at what's taking place for North Carolina a &T. They're on the road. They're versus Campbell Campbells. Uh, they come in at 10 and 6. Campbells is 9 and 8. And then on Sunday, uh, A&T hosts Elon in terms of those matchups. So a little interesting there when you talk about what's going on. North Carolina a and they are essentially tied or a half game uh, behind in first place, Stony Brook is sitting at five and one in the conference. They're four and one, so a half game bracket because they hadn't played the same amount of games. But as we said, uh, they have Campbell that sits at two and four in the conference race, and they have then on Monday, uh, then on Sunday they threw a Friday Sunday, I should say, Elon that sits at three and three. So they get a chance to continue yeah. uh, to make their statement uh, in the uh, CAA. Any final thoughts on them? Yeah, well, I'm expecting a 2-0 oh weekend for, for the Aggies uh, in terms of uh, what they should be able to get done. They should be able to keep the uh, the wheels rolling over there in the CA. They're playing some very good, great basketball thus far in the season. I've, uh, when I started to kind of take a look at this top five poll, I have to be sure that I pay attention to North Carolina A&T because they've been playing such great ball thus far in the season. I agree with you. Keep your eyes on the Aggies. Those ladies over there are getting it done. With that, let's take our second break. We'll come back on the side and give you our men's top five and see what Charles thinks about that. Stickers will be right back after this second break. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and parenting education coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. The human voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers Voice time and time again. Conversational. Powerhouse, intelligent and sincere. That's the voice you need for your creative marketing process. K E A V E R S V O I C E dot com. Covers voice, covers voice, covers voice dot com. Always on, all the time. No. No. Come on, him. Ooh, I like him. The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge, featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're gonna tell you if your team, if they wanna love that, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, cause he gonna teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Ville with Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Let's jump right into it. I see somebody says Tennessee State men's basketball is on a three-game win streak. It's interesting that you talk about it because we will get into a little bit about uh, Tennessee State and see if they find a way to stay in the top five and where they may be ranked. Nobody dropped out, so all five teams are still here. Those teams, we did have some different teams moving around and getting some receiving some votes. Alabama State Hornets, 99-4-1. Probably the surprise of the year in terms of what they're doing early in the SWAC race. Uh, Southern Jaguars sit at 99-3-2. They started off hot, uh, but they've kind of fallen on hard times. They went up the road to Gramlin, 
uh, and jumped out early, but Gramlin walked them down and got it done. So the Gramlin State Tigers are 7-11, 4-1 as they look at it. Uh, but they're going to be in the mix as they're actually uh, looking at what's going on in that mix. Let's get into the top five programs on the men's side. At number five, you have Jackson State Tigers that sit at 8-10, and 4-1. and one. Uh, Saturday, Prairie View jumped up and got them. They were rolling. But they bounce back and take down Texas Southern. They're actually playing pretty good the last couple of games. A big game in terms of Tigers wanting to make a statement of the team. Uh, the Texas Southern Tigers that have won the conference tournament the last three years consecutively. Solid win. Uh, they do fall a spot with that loss from three, but they are still in the top five. Bringing us to number four. Number four, Delaware State Hornets. Surprising. You talk Coppin State. On the women's side of the MEAC, well, guess who's 3-0 and on the men's side of the MEAC? That's your number four team, the Delaware State Hornets. They sit at 10-9, and 3-0, 73 points. They stay at number four after getting one win last week. Bringing you to number three, Norfolk State Spartans. They fall from the number one spot. Had a major upset this past weekend that surprised a lot of folks. Just when people said the MEAC is going to do what it does, the MEAC gives you an early stumble bug as Norfolk State falls. They fall a 12-8 and eight overall and 2-1 and one in the conference race. They still hold on to two first-place votes with 89 points as they fall from the two spot. At number two, though, you have none other than North Carolina Central Eagles, and that's who I should say was the number one spot after they defeated Norfolk State. They started off the season as number one, if you would, in uh, the open week zero, as we like to call it, before we get into conference play. Uh, North Carolina Central Eagles had a tough loss, 10-8, and 2-1, and one, uh, four first-place votes, so they fall from the number one spot. Uh, they just fall one ring uh, as they get it done. Guess who's number one? Somebody talked about it earlier, Tennessee State Tigers. 11-9, they've won three straight. They're 4-3 and three in conference play over there in the Ohio Valley. Uh, number five, 104. They jump all the way up from number five to grab onto the number one spot. They're really hot, great overall record. Take some lumps in OVC, but it looks like they've got some things going. We'll talk a little bit about some key matchups this weekend. But before we do that, Charles, what are your thoughts in terms of the men's side of the top five uh, this week in week number three? Tennessee State, uh, surprising in terms of they, they're getting it rolling up there in the OBC. Always tough conference, but went three in a row. Uh, give their uh, kudos to the Tennessee State uh, basketball team with regards to what they've been doing lately. Uh, I'm going to start from the bottom. Uh, Jackson State, tough loss against Prairie View. Uh, and I can't say enough about Prairie View's defense. I mean, they just made it really, really tough uh, for Jackson State Saturday night. Once Jackson State couldn't get any shots to fall, their body language started to change, you know. And I, I think that, that that doubt kind of creep in a little bit in that game. So a uh, big win for Prairie View on the road. You always want to get a split. Huge bounce back for Jackson State to come back and get the win against Texas Southern because Texas Southern traditionally is kind of on Jackson State. I think Jackson State now have won two in a row against Texas Southern. Delaware State, they've been the surprise for me in terms of what they've been doing uh, thus far. 3-0 in the conference. Martez Robinson a guy who can knock buckets down from uh, outside, who can get in the lane, cause confusion, get to the free throw line, get some easy buckets. Uh, big win from uh, Delaware State. Watching them going forward, I'm going to keep an eye on Delaware State. Hornets, Norfolk State, that was a shocker. Did not see them uh, 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 with that loss on, on Saturday. Another shocker was North Carolina Central uh, in terms of losing to South Carolina State. You talk about Monday, weird things happen. That was my Monday weird one for the week. Yep. Besides uh, Grambling State on Saturday, shout out as they got the sweep, the brooms, getting it done against Southern. So shout out to what's going on there. I see uh, shout out to uh, Dr. Scott as he is checking out all the mix and see what's going on. But I want to get in a little more in terms of the dialogue. You talked about some of these key matchups. Fascinating with Tennessee State on Thursday. Uh, as I kind of told you, I happened to watch that game. And it was, you know, just your normal game. They jump out 10 and 0. So you're like, oh, maybe they're going to get it to them. Um, and Tennessee Tech fought back. And it was actually just a 36 30 game at halftime. 
10 minutes into the game, they did not allow hmm. Tennessee Tech, the Golden Eagles, to score 10 points. And I was just, like, done. I was amazed. They blew them out. Uh, obviously, they scored a couple of more points in uh, the the rest of the second half. But they dominated that matchup. And they don't go and get a big win. But with that being said, also, I know Edwin D. Moore asked the question, how many basketball programs are in the MEAC? There's actually eight. You know, we think about football, there's six programs. But in basketball, they have eight, Coppin State and Maryland Eastern Shore that do not have football programs but play uh, basketball. We talked about Coppin State on the women's side at a 3-0, and uh, but you have Maryland Eastern Shore in the mix. Then you had Roberts talk about Jeff Roberts asked, could he get some votes? they playing some pretty good basketball. I tell you what's easy. You keep winning. Not only you get votes, you can find a way to jump in, not just receiving votes, but jump in the top five. But kudos to them. This is a team that you were questioning whether they were going to go over the season. They turned it on a little late in terms of non-conference play, getting uh, some a big win over there in Chris Paul. Um, they had a tough loss to Central that obviously was number one part of the year. And then they get in the conference play, and they really get some big victories. Can they continue to push it? Get it going, have to give some credit to the Aggies. Yeah. To, what are they getting done at this point in the season? I have my eyes on them. We'll see if they can continue to push it up, much like our independent program at Tennessee State. So great points, great questions. Now, now it's time. Oh, go ahead, Charles. Well, I wanted to go into this upcoming week. Uh, in terms of let's say the Aggies continue to do what they've been doing, who's the team that they can push out? Who is the team that has uh probably the toughest goal this weekend? Yeah, good stuff. Let me ask you about some of the games this weekend. We'll get into it. Uh, perfect time to do that. Let's start with the MEAC first. Uh, in the MEAC, obviously, you have that Coppin State at Norfolk State. We talked about it on the women's side. We're here we have it on the men's side. Coppin State is struggling at 10 and 15, but Norfolk State wants to keep going. Uh, any thoughts in terms of that matchup? You have Morgan uh, hosting Howard uh, in terms of that, and then obviously – the North Carolina Central and Maryland Eastern Shore. It gets a little more uh, into the mix when you talk about on Monday. You have North Carolina Central taking on Delaware State. That's North the Carolina Central is 10 and 8. Delaware State is 10 and 9. So not much going on. Maybe Saturday you keep your eyes just to see if there's anything that stirs you a drink, if you will. But really Monday is when it gets interesting. You have two teams coming in with overall winning records, which is always nice. This early in the season, team both teams are playing pretty well. But the upstart, Delaware State Hornets, are undefeated, and they want to keep it that way. Central does not want to take another loss. Obviously, they had that upset against South Carolina State on the road this weekend, and they're going to be looking to fix uh, what ails them. What are your thoughts on that matchup? I think the Monday night matchup, that's the one I'm looking forward to, Delaware State North Carolina Central. Uh, Thus far, they've been uh, in the first quarter uh, of the conference games. They've been two of the, uh, the heavyweights. So to see them face off, that's going to be fun. Uh, the other uh, couple games that I'm keeping an eye on uh, this weekend, uh, Jackson State on the road at Bethune Cookman. We, we've seen what the more magic can, did against Southern. Uh, what can Jackson State do against uh, Bethune Cookman on the road? That's going to be uh, fairly interesting. And like you mentioned, Alabama State sitting just outside that top five in terms of their men's basketball team. Well, they do the Texas two step this weekend. So we'll see what Alabama State uh, can do in terms of trying to get into the top five. Yep. And they sitting at four and one in the conference. They want to make a statement that for real, they go on the road. Texas two step, as you said, always tough, uh, no matter what's going on with their teams. I'm going to get to Manic Monday. That's when you say things happen to shape up and you can get your slip-ups. Obviously, you got the Jackson State of FAMU. Mm -hmm. uh, but Thune Cookman is probably the more interesting game. But FAMU is coming off a win against Mississippi Valley, so they're feeling a little better on themselves. And is that Monday? You have UAP at uh, Gramlin, Mississippi Valley at Southern, Alabama A&M at Prairie View, Alcorn at Bethune Cookman. I'd imagine that last one with Alcorn getting the big win against Prairie View and really beat them up. Yeah. It's probably the one that you're kind of looking at other than maybe Jackson State and FAMU. In terms of just that, as you like to call it, that that Monday uh, on the road, any of those give you a little uh, hesitation? Pine Bluff maybe at Graham? Pine Bluff at Graham, and that, that probably gives me a bit of pause. And then uh, Alcorn at Bethune on Monday? Yes. 
I think that's another one uh, that uh, to keep your eye on. If there's well, I, yep, yep, that Alcorn yeah. and Bethune is that's the yeah. one I I kind of got my own. So I agree mm-hmm. with you. Can yep. Alcorn find a way uh, to continue to write the ship? Bethune Cookman is playing solid, but they played some close games. Yeah. Even the game they got against Pine Bluff the other yeah. night, you know, uh, as Pine Bluff got it done. You know, you just gotta watch because they play really well and they play better at home. So maybe that's the one. Yeah, that exactly. Play. Exactly. Let's go to those independents. No Thursday game for Tennessee State, but they're on the road at it. Eastern Illinois that comes in at 9 and 10 uh, in terms of what they got going on. So I'm kind of intrigued about that matchup. Yeah. Uh, can Tennessee State continue to get it going? Um, Eastern Illinois is just at 3 and 3 in the conference race. So yeah. not anything that scares you, but it is on the road. What are your thoughts in terms of this matchup? Well, I think, like you said, it is on the road. So you, you keep an eye on all those games uh, uh, when uh, your team is uh, getting on the road. But I don't think they should have any issues with, with Eastern Illinois. I expect Tennessee State to to uh, continue to keep things rolling right in the middle of the lane there. Let's go to a t Since they asked us to keep an eye on it, you talking about a team that can make a statement? a uh, and is on the road at Delaware that comes in at 11 and 8 overall. Delaware is in the standings just three and three, though. So we'll see. Can they get it going? But then you got that matchup, if you would, uh, on uh, Saturday, uh, which is A&T at Drexel. Guess what? Drexel's overall record, 14 to six, but the 7 0 in the conference. So A&T gets a chance uh, for Big Jeff State. Roberts. Yeah, they get State. a chance to make a statement. So I'm interested in both of these games. They can get either one of them. Uh, particularly it's Drexel on Monday, but they can find a way to bring out a broom on the road. Oh, yeah, we'll start looking at uh, A&T, uh, the Aggies, mm-hmm. in much different light. Any thoughts on terms of those independent matchups there? No, I think that's the big one. Uh, you mentioned it on, on the road this weekend. Anytime you – we've talked about it uh, at nausea. Anytime you're getting on the road, you want to get something, get momentum, anything that uh, wins – that you can get on the road, but that'll be a huge statement if they go to Drexel and get that uh, W against a 7-0 team thus far in the conference play. I like the way you think. I'm on the same page. With that, let's take our last break. We'll come back on the other side and get into the swag football <laughs> matches. <laughs> well, some of these had tripped out, trickled out, but now we have it all. I want to know where is your excitement in terms of – of the matchups and what does everybody else seem to be excited about what's the buzz on social media in terms of what the fans are saying (laughs) about games they're looking forward to stick with us be right back out of this break we'll see what charles has to say since 2002 empowerment resources inc a nonprofit organization has empowered more than 1500 youth and adults in duval and surrounding counties through its programs journey into womanhood girls mentoring life skills for teens and parenting education coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. The human voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers Voice time and time again. Conversational. Powerhouse, intelligent, and sincere. That's the voice you need for your creative marketing process. K E A V E R S V O I C E dot com. Covers voice, covers voice, covers voice dot com. Always on, all the time. Nope. Nope. You want him? Ooh, I like him. The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge, featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco. We're back. 
It's time for the 2024 Urban NerdCon. Join us in Atlanta, Georgia, April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel. Special guests include Underworld creator Kevin Grievous, Gary Gray from Barely Odd Parents, from Nickelodeon, Giovanni Samuels, the Science Machine Michael Green, the Sci Fi Sisters, and from Spaceballs and Star Trek Voyager, Tim Russ. Hi, I'm Tim Russ. Join me April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia for the Urban Nerd Con. Our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone con. I'll see you there. Live long and prosper. Visit theurbannerdcon.net to get your buy one, get one free badges before the price increases. Remember, our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone's con. See you. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who the ball, ball, ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir and pay attention because he gonna teach a lesson. This is Dr. Phil's inside the HBC Sports Lab. With that being said, Charles, before we get into some key matchups that just has you either pausing or excited about, what's the big talk out there that you've heard in terms of SWAC, Twitter, social media, in terms of what people are talking about, uh, just HBC in general? Uh, I think one of the big conversations today is uh, – uh, a to fact, Florida A and M. The, the schedule comes out. Still no head coach in place. <laughs> and you know, basically, you know, people talking about wanting to get their league back. You know, the fam, you they ran through they ran through the conference last year. You know, you talk about uh, 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 eight no in the conference play, and everybody. I, I think things are just going to be so wide open uh in 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 the swag this upcoming year it makes for a really exciting year because when you talk about all the coaching changes i think me and you started kind of taking a look around the conference and just from a standpoint of continuity who are the quarterbacks that are coming back there aren't a lot of quarterbacks coming back so it, it, i think things could be very wide open uh but through cooking with what they've done recruiting wise is generating buzz in terms of some of the you know, games that they have on their schedule and who's coming to them. Uh, one of the ones that kind of piqued my interest, Jackson State going to uh, Daytona in October. Uh, we we want to see uh, if one of these uh, teams that were toward the bottom, if they can make a big jump, especially in a year where the perception is there are a lot of teams down. And that's going to be interesting when you talk about teams down. And I'm going to be fascinated, will teams be down? I think it's really intriguing at this point that the last three coaches, meaning the last three teams that have dominated the conference in terms of either the number of championships they won over a period of time or what they did in terms of going undefeated in the conference or just one loss. Obviously, you go three years, you know, more than three years back pre COVID, you had the Alcorn State Braves. Coach McNair is not there anymore. So, yeah, you're talking about people wanting some lick backs. I'm sure yeah. there's some people that are looking, still looking at the Braves as something they want to beat up on, although they hadn't come out of the West since they switched over. Can they find a way to finally turn the needle and get back to where they were? pre-COVID. Then right after COVID, you had Jackson State uh, that ran through the conference undefeated and got it done in terms of winning the conference back-to-back -back years. And then last year, fam, you finally got over the hurdle. Uh, they only had one loss in conference play. That was to Jackson State each of those first two years as they joined the conference. And then last year, they run the table and finally knocked down that door, uh, getting out the gates, feeding Jackson State, uh, then they come in there. So not only you talk about the fact that you don't have uh, starting quarterbacks really coming back for these teams that are upper class from junior and senior, and that's not to say anything negative uh, with the transfer news of Texas Southern quarterback going over to Alabama State, but he only played the one game last year, and it yeah. was a loss. So even yeah. when you talk about uh, that matchup, it would be fascinating. So you kind of jumped out of there. I like that. Can people get that lick backs? Well, you're talking about uh, September 28th 
the first opportunity to do that is that matchup of Alabama and m They're on the road to FAMU. Coach Maynard is the senior leader. If we go back three years to the new SWAC, when I say new SWAC, I'm talking about expansion SWAC with 12 teams. Yeah. Maynard is the only coach uh, that is still left that was here in 2021. Can he take that next step? And this is really one to kind of open things off in conference play where he gets an early test to see what that looks like, and it's on the road. So that's the first one that kind of piques my eye with all those things coming together, and that's the reason why. Yeah, no doubt. I, I think you hit the nail on the head on that one because uh, not only uh, on the road at FAM, but uh, they have this huge uh, home game winning streak at Bragg. Can FAM you whole serve – uh, at home, and they you get a, a nice test with regards to, and, and here's some buzz going along as well. Is is you, you mentioned Coach Maynard being the dean of coaches uh, in the sweat? How much are the Alabama A and M faithful looking at him this year? Like, hey, we got to make a move now. You know, we we've heard enough of Jackson State, heard enough of FAMU. We are ready to get back in the mix. You know, uh, we haven't really heard or seen that Alabama A and M since the spring. Since that spring uh, where they won the SWAT championship meet? Yeah, great point. Edwin D. Moore makes up a good one. Uh, he says he hate the SWAT front-loaded practically all of the schedules with four of the three straight divisional games with only one late. I believe it is best to open up with a cross division with one division in September and two in October and one in November. I believe that makes for a far more exciting conference race. I like a lot of the points you make there in terms of really being – that more strategic, uh, where you put your divisional races uh, later in the season uh, and maybe some other cross big matchups early. That's taking a model for the NFL. NFL does that quite a bit uh, with the team. So that's something to keep your eyes on to see if they talk about. But while that September game in 28th kind of opened things up with just uh, a slew of games, you actually have five SWAT contacts on September 28th. I got to say – you know, with being here in Texas, and so some biasness there, Texas Southern at Prairie View. Prairie View coming out of the West Division. Obviously, Coach McDowell, uh, they got over the hump in terms of getting into division uh, after they let down uh, and couldn't get it done with that lo- road loss to Mississippi Valley two years ago. Can they take the next step and win the conference? Well, they lose. They got to do it with the new quarterback. Um, see if that transfer portal is going to pay dividends. We'll see what that looks like. But now this matchup is with Texas Southern becomes interesting with two Oiler players coming out. We talked about it earlier with the media day. <laughs> That's one for different reasons maybe that has a little interest to kick things off Labor Day Classic between Texas Southern and Prairie View or with Chris Dishman and, and Bubba McDowell uh, in terms of that. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I was, I was waiting on uh... – uh, you know, the rest of the Houston Oilers show up today. I was looking for Lamar Lathan. I was looking for Haywood Jeffries. I, I was just waiting on this Oiler reunion uh, today. But, uh, yeah, that, I think that's going to be a fun matchup. And it was uh, a unique juxtaposition with uh, Prairie View's head coach being there at the uh, uh, press conference there today with regards to Chris Dishman, uh, both teammates and both now face off each other. Uh, in what is going to be a pivotal game in, in terms of getting an early foothold in the SWAC West. You talking about the rest of the Houston Oilers? Surprised Eddie Robinson didn't decide to show right, up. Right, exactly. <laughs> hey, why, why not? It's not like he still doesn't have a house here. Uh, yeah, no, no, but right. with that being said, uh, let me go to you and ask what a, another matchup that you're looking forward to before I get in a couple of more that I have highlighted. Uh. I immediately went to Florida AM and m and the Alabama a and game. That was one uh, September 28th. That jumps out for me. I continue to make this case uh, with regards to some of the names that we've seen around the sweat. Mickey Joseph is a name uh, that uh, people in Louisiana have talked about, either associated with uh, in, in the mix at the Southern job. Uh, obviously, now he, he takes over the helm at Grambling. And I continuously say Grambling just doesn't stay down for forever and a day. I'm very interested to see what does Grambling do this upcoming season. Uh, they get all corn coming in on October 12th. That game always uh, in the hole down there in Grambling, always huge. Uh, all corn fans, you don't have uh, uh, Fred and there to kick around anymore. So 
let's see, you know, what, what this all corn team does, you know, because honestly, all corn always found themselves in the mix. But, you know, there was always, you know, grumbling uh, on the reservation, if you will. But now you have Cedric Thomas there. So uh, we'll see what this Alcorn uh, Braves team uh, looks like going forward. Uh, I yeah. think the one that a lot of people. Let, me, let me pause you there yeah. before you go to the next one. You're talking about life in the mix because I, I like that without McNair. And how would it be since he seems to be in the mix down at FAMU? Mm. both in terms of what the consulting group said. He was one of the five that Lisa was reported out. Also in terms of the affinity groups, he was one of the five that came out. So, boy, you talking about it can be interesting, but you're right. Uh, now you have L.A., life after McNair. It'll be mm. fascinating to see what that means, uh, L.A.M. Other thing is you spoke about Gremlin. They don't stay down for long. Obviously, significant higher there. It'll be fascinating to see what that looks like. Uh, but I'm fascinating. If I'm reading this right, uh, their first conference game is in the State Fair Classic against Prairie View. Yeah, uh, Prairie View will have a two games under their belt, uh, both of them in conference play. I mean, Prairie View gonna find out really early, at least in the division where they stand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I told you about opening things up against uh, Labor Day Classic weekend was well, September 21st. Uh, Prairie View has Southern, and then. September 28th, Gramlin and Prairie View. So it's interesting. Gramlin's first game uh, <laughs> in conference play will be in the State Fair Classic. Uh, I know you were going to go back to another one. What else did you have? I've already – I can't tell you how many Jackson State people have texted me today and they they starting to book rooms, all right? They're booking rooms in Mobile for Alabama a and They're booking rooms in Atlanta for the Celebration Bowl. They are uh, excited about the schedule coming out. Uh, you got Florida a and coming into the vet. And the, uh, the vet, uh, over the past few years now, has been a nightmarish place to play for teams. Uh, I, I've looked at the, the game uh, November 16th. Is that going to be for the SWAC East title when they go to Montgomery uh, to take on Alabama State? So that's going to be a, a, a pretty – uh, a game that I think a lot of people circle, uh, not just Jackson State people, but just uh, talking in general about the SWAC today. Uh, that was one of the games that was definitely one that was circled. And like I said, I, I, I think it's kind of refreshing uh, with regards to this Bethune-Cookman team. Uh, they've generated quite a bit of buzz today in terms of just some of the things that they've been able to do in uh, recruiting. They've quietly been going about getting a lot of things done recruiting-wise. Uh, Raymond, Raymond Woody is trying to build something yeah. down. Exactly. So uh, they've been generating quite a bit of buzz in terms of where they fall on somebody's schedule. And like, like I said, I, I always keep an eye on what uh, all Corn State Braves are going to do this year. Yeah, you speak of FAMU again. And before they see Jackson State on October 19th, they have already would have already played Alabama a and they would have already have played Alabama State, which is going to be interesting. Uh, I have the Alabama State uh, Jackson State game as an intriguing one for me in regards, and it's in November. Could yeah. it mean something going down the stretch? And this is a game where both teams have played for homecoming the last couple of years, and uh, the, the road team has won. So that's exactly. one that's going to shape out. And potentially late in the year, where Edwin D. Moore talked about most of these being front loaded, which FAMU and Jackson example that this is one that's back loaded that could, if things work out, could be very interesting to see what that looks like. So fascinating in terms of that matchup. Another one is that Southern at FAMU, obviously, you're going to have two new coaches breaking mm -hmm. in that. Uh, and so, with that being said, we said. L-A-M, now you got L-A-W, life after uh, Willie Simmons or L-A-S after Simmons. Uh, it's fascinating when you talk about it because it would be fun to see Simmons go into Jackson. We won't get to see that. Uh, <laughs> that would have been one I might would have had to uh, get down there with you, Charles, go into Jackson just to see what that looks like. Uh, yeah, I would no. imagine it would have been some fun. Leading into that, and certainly in the post game, no matter what would take place. You know, Donald, but that chapter has been closed, so we yeah. got another one. We'll see what that looks like. Before we close out, out any last thing that's on your mind that you wanted to talk about there? Well, I, real quickly, I was just curious. When you start taking a look at the 
the teams not named Florida a and or Prairie View? Uh, who are the teams that could push uh, as of, you know, uh, January 23rd when we start taking a look at these schedules? Uh, when you start taking a look at the of Jackson State five and three, Alabama State five and three last year in conference play, uh, Alcorn six and two, Southern five and three. Who are the teams that could push their way into the next level? Yeah, that'll be what we do every week during the fall to kind of see what goes down. Uh, what are the ups and downs? Who's going to be on the ledge? Why are they on the ledge for different weeks? Who's going to be the front runner? Can they hold on to it? Who's going to maybe charge down the stretch? It'll be fascinating uh, as uh, already people are talking about 2024. As you said, Jackson State fans are excited. They are booking their tickets uh, in December now for the Celebration Bowl. Let, I wonder any other fans out there booking some rooms. And well. let me say this. While we have this band national championship, bands get your budgets together now so that you can start traveling when you got these games that you need to be at. I see you yeah. all in Atlanta. I see I, that's great, but make sure you get to where you need to be uh, for this upcoming season to root on your team and be that 12th man in the stand. Yep, you got big money there uh, in terms of that national championship. Credit to uh, HBCU Sports.com. Uh, getting it done is they had a reward out there uh, in terms of who's champions voting on that, and that's going down between Southern and Jackson State. So mm-hmm. fascinating to see what that looks like as well. So, yep, get your budget out. Get it done. It's time to get on the road. I'll bring out my poll rankings, and you know it's an important part of that. Thank you for listening to Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kenyatta Caville, the Dean of HBCU Sports, coming from Inside the Lab in the College of HBCU Sports with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Hope you enjoyed the show. Again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Ville's Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop every Tuesday and Thursday, 6 o'clock Central Standard Time. We look forward to Thursday as we give you the latest in the lab. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Caville, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Inside the HBC Sports Lab 1 on Facebook. Inside the HBC Sports Lab on YouTube. Dream big. Continue to move forward. We'll talk with you soon. Charles? Of course. Lecture? Is, is Roy back there? Dismissed. <laughs> <laughs>